and winners and welcome to another edition of the wrong button podcast the podcast where we discuss most things video games some things anime and anything else that generally makes us happier that we find that we enjoy once again i am joined by the love the lovely ms elizabeth <laughs> hi um uh, and we're here today to talk about something that's near and dear to our parts as people who enjoy stories um especially stories that are done on a visual medium uh but are greatly influenced by uh, written literature and things like that and that is show don't tell liz is the resident artist of the group can you explain to us what show don't tell is right uh, show don't tell is something they tell all beginning writers to do, and that is to express feelings, actions, and emotions rather than write them down as or have someone say that they are doing said things or feeling said things out loud. So less dialogue, more more descriptive audio kind of things, such as uh, say there is a there's a woman. She could say she's hungry. Or, instead, you could just have her stomach growl, and then the audience goes, oh, she's hungry. Uh, it's a lot more intuitive for the audience to figure things out on themselves, rather than having people tell them, oh, she's hungry. It's like, it, I don't know, it's just kind of boring that way, too, I think. <laughs> no, I, and I completely agree to you. Um, and, and to definitely balance off of that... Um, when we say uh, not show it through dialogue, um, it's not always the. Uh, it's not always like that you can't have dialogue where they say that, but I kind of want to go to Princess Bride here for the other one. Um, in the movie and in the book, uh, Wesley constantly says, as you wish. And mm-hmm. the revelation towards the end is that is always him saying that I love you uh, to Princess Buttercup. And it, it's definitely something where it's like it, it's something sweet and simple that any time she asks him to do something, he always responds with as you wish and does it. And it, it's dialogue of saying, yes, I love you. Yes, of course, um, I will do this thing for you. But it's not going like, I love you, so I'll do it. And it makes mm-hmm. it feel more romantic and personable. It does. It's kind of like a secret code, you know, it's or a um, or an internal joke. Yes, um, and, and it, it's always done. Um, I'm sorry, it's not always done. That's actually why we're talking about this because <laughs> that's why we're talking about. It's not always done, and that's unfortunate because a lot of shows and a lot of stories could be so much better for it. And especially in this era of where we're watching um, quarantine still happening when we're recording this, and it'll probably still be happening when this goes up. Uh, mm-hmm. But we're we're consuming more visual media. Um, more anime, uh, more video games, and more storytelling that requires a different way to convey that story. And a lot of times uh, we get left with this effect of we're going to tell you what we should be trying to convey to you rather than actually trying to convey it to you. Um, And my personal um, opinion, we have a couple different categories to go down. Um, The biggest example of this being done poorly to me is Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> um, Liz, you and I watch a lot of anime. Um, oh, yes. I know you're more fili- familiar with Dragon Ball Z, a bridge, than Dragon Ball. Um, <laughs> Which is like the only one to watch it, in my opinion. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> that's just me. You're not wrong. You are. They, they have captured that show down to the T. Yes. Um, yes. But what, what do they always say? How do you know that somebody's stronger than somebody else? Uh, power levels, I think, is how it goes in that one. They're just like they, it's a numerical, uh, it, it's a quantifiable thing that they can read off of these scanners, and they're, they're just called power levels, right? Yep. Like... <laughs> Go. That's it. You're you're correct. Go on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Do you want me to say over nine thousand? Because I will say oh, over nine thousand. <laughs> and, and that's exactly it. It is. I have a big <laughs> number. It. My number's bigger than your number. I'm gonna throw my big number at you. <laughs> it, it, and, and that's all it is it, it's like um it's kind of like throwing iq at each other it's like my iq is this <laughs> and, and it, it is and there's a there's a point in the in especially in dragon ball z abridged uh where uh if you remember it's towards the end during the cell games 
Um, mm-hmm. Android 18 and 16 are watching Android 17 and Piccolo fight. And they are doing nothing but punching each other. And their bodies are like like contorting because they're supposed to like punching through them. And she goes, this could literally not get any dumber. And then it does. <laughs> yes! I remember that. And that's what it feels like when somebody tells me something instead of showing me something. Is it's just like, okay, mm-hmm. I get it. This... This can't get dumber. Why Why is your number so important? But you mm-hmm. never really show me anything about that number. Um, yes. But the good news is you have some good examples. I have some good examples uh, <laughs> of a couple different ways of which that can be done. I figured the easiest version over here um, is why don't we actually start off with – I actually we had it listed a little bit differently, but why don't we start off with um, power? Because I think power um, either with levels or – Um, how it's conveyed in a show would be the easiest way of doing um, show don't tell and then we'll get into the nuances of relationships Mm -hmm. and growth okay all right do you all right so we go ahead well we already talked about dbz yep um we also wanted to mention my hero academia and i think actually that is a like so we have dbz as comparison in the numerical system the quantifiable like this is my this is my number um, but then like, you've got like my hero David, you've got All Might, who right at the very beginning, they tell you he is the best in the world. And you're just like, okay, well, what does the best in the world mean? And then you see him fight the sludge monster and he literally changes the weather. And you, you just sit back, you're like, so that's what the best is. <laughs> like they tell you, but then they show you, um, and that's very that, that's one of the things that's like very important in the storytelling is to tell like you can tell you can tell people we're not saying that you can't tell people things in your story or that it won't be good if you do so we're just saying don't only do that so like with my hero academia they tell you but then they show you in the most epic way possible and that is changing the weather and that was just awesome so that that would be one of my examples um Like, you're a Star Wars fan, too, Chris, right? I am a Star Wars fan. Actually, uh, before we go into that, I was going to piggyback off of that. um, Okay. Because that made me think of something, um, and this will help cover, because we're we're going to be talking more about anime, um, just because some of the video game differences, um, and this one's going to blend the two. Um, That is one of the coolest moments I think I have ever... You're right, where where they show that difference of, of power, and we see what the best is. Um, but let's jump to the end of season three. So we're going to do a little bit of a spoiler cast here. Um, okay. Where he's fighting all for one. Yes. And Endeavor shows up. <laughs> and Endeavor calls out to him and says, show the world why the gap between you and me. And Endeavor is number two. He is the mm-hmm. second strongest in the world. He goes, show mm-hmm. the world why the gap between you and I is so vast and different. And why you are number one, and I'm not even in the same league as you. Mm. And before that, we'd seen Endeavor fight, where he's like cooking these monsters that at one point All Might was fighting all out with, the Nomus. Mm -hmm. And he's cooking them and like barbecuing them and taking them out. Not with ease, (laughs) but he's taking out two or three at a time. And we saw All Might struggle with one. Um, And I was like, I was like, okay, so this is somebody who's, he's, he's clearly saying I'm weaker than you. Um, Mm -hmm. but we've already seen where you're doing things that are stronger than All Might is. So it it kind of blends that show and tell where he's like, you saw me do this, but now let's, let me, let's prove and solidify why it is. And we see All Might finally get like ripped down to being nothing and, and being the, the, the weakened state that he, that we know he is, but the world gets to see that. And even Mm -hmm. in that weakened state, we still see him pull off an amazing feat. Um, Mm -hmm. so I think just going off of, um, My Hero Academia by itself, that is one of the best show don't tell moments. Right. And that just came to me because you said, when you said change the weather and I'm like, Liz, that is so perfect. (laughs) It it really is. It's one, it's a, it's a great example. And that, and that's what mean, that's what we mean, um, as enthusiasts to this type of, to this type of thing of the show don't tell. That's what we mean by that. That's what gets us, the audience, so excited when they show us. Um, and again, like like I was saying before, like they can tell us, but then you gotta back it up with some action. 
uh, unlike in certain episodes of DBZ where they just tell you and tell you and tell you and tell you and tell you and, you and like nothing really and happens. This form, my pe- this isn't even my final form, and I'm already over right. a million. And it, it, it's I, just I know. Like... Um, but yes, to answer your <laughs> other question before I went off on that tangent because I was just like, wow, Liz is so smart. I didn't even think about that, but that's what made <laughs> me think of it. Um, let's. Uh, you said Star Wars. Go ahead. What, what are we going with Star Wars? Okay, so with Star Wars, um, again, another spoiler warning. So uh, I saw on your channel, I've been watching it too, uh, that you guys have been playing Fallen Order mm-hmm. um, and you're near the end and you're about to come up with the like final, not even boss, because you just don't even stand a chance against him. And that is, are we allowed to say it? Yep. Is it okay? <laughs> so <laughs> okay, Star Wars ends next for, for us winners, quick spoiler. Um, Star Wars will be finished next week on the channel. Um, the last two episodes are up and running. Um, so yes, feel free, spoiler away. Okay, all right. So you fight, you fight, or well, at least you confront Darth Vader. Like you can't oh. even fight him though. And that's the thing though is that like, to, for Cal, for this character, like he, uh, he confronts him, but then like <laughs> you force push him, or at least you try to put some kind of force into him, and Vader just flicks it away. It, and it, it's, like it's such a casual <laughs> wave. It's it's phenomenal. And then, not even that, but when you're fighting him, or like when you're running away from him and he keeps chasing you, mm-hmm. and then like he confronts you in the hallway, and the only thing you can think of is just flooding the room with water. And Vader holds back water, and you are down so far underneath. The pressure is just immense, and Vader's holding it back with the force. It- just, Wow. <laughs> And that actually, just going off on the on the power tangent with that, that actually brings me up to a couple things there because now keep in mind, like I said, like Liz said, this is this is end game. This is the last sequence of gameplay. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, um, if you guys have watched, I'm a big proprietor of get 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 really cool skills, get really cool cool moves, and I did, and you'll see it in the video. I I fully charged force push. So for Cal, that is throwing both hands behind him gathering the force and throwing it and vader just casually flicks it like he, he waves mm-hmm. his hand like he's doing these are not the droids you're looking for it's like this is not the force <laughs> you're going to use and it goes away <laughs> and you by the end of the game like i when you when you've played a video game and i think this is so important um it's your you feel incredible but being an established mm-hmm. universe that it is in star wars we all know how insanely strong Vader is mm-hmm. and Vader. Like when you fight him, like I don't, I don't want to stand a chance against Vader. I'm still a Padawan. I like, or I'm a Jedi Knight, but I, I don't, I am new at this. I don't want to feel, I, I like, I didn't want to feel as powerless as I did, but I'm like, no, like this is, we don't know who this is. It's this armored warrior that can use the force better than us. And he, he like, w- what do you do? What do you do when you come up against something like that? And it's like, okay, run. We've heard about him before. No one survives. Just run. Yep. And I, yeah, that that's the thing is that like people tell you nobody ever lives. Then you see why. Yes. And you're just like, oh no. Um, and and that's something that's it's it's very prevalent in RPGs. It's very prevalent in things like that. Um, another game, and I, I know I talk about it all the time. And Liz, you're not as big a fan of this as Devil May Cry. It's just that I've never experienced it or watched it myself personally. And that's understandable. Um, the first three games follow the main character, Dante. Um, so Dante now has three games where you go through and you're like, oh, this is this is Dante, the certifiable badass. And then you have the fourth game where you introduce the new character, Nero. And you start playing as him from the beginning. So what do you think the first thing they do to you is? hey, we're going to have this new character that you're playing as go against Dante. If you play the game on a harder difficulty, Dante will use every move that he had learned in the past few games, and it is a struggle to fight him. It's not easy. It is It is a slugfest. And he gets up and, like, at the end, like, you impale him and stab him with a sword, and he pulls himself through the sword, and he goes, yeah, you're pretty good, kid. Um, You'll get there one day. But it's, he has his full move list, and it's one of those things where if you play it on easy, it's kind of lost. But I feel that's a great in video games when it's like, we're going to make you fight this final version that is going to be you. 
and you're going to get there, but you're not there yet. So that way you feel the difference, but you also get to see where you're going to go. And hmm. I think okay. that's a great um, show don't tell moment. Yeah, that sounds really good. It's it's one of my favorites, and that's that's why there, that way we have our two video games in here, uh, being a video game and uh, pop culture co- <laughs> um, uh, podcast. <laughs> so we we cross those off. Um, and I think you and I could go on for power for a while. Um, I guess one of the we could. the final ones to go on because we have it for a few other examples would be um, Uncle Iroh in in Avatar. <laughs> yes, we cannot. It's impossible to talk about Show Don't Tell and not bring up Avatar. Like it's 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 impossible. I think it is probably the best animated series telling a story using a a, a visual medium, um, conveying everything from power, political strife, uh, family strife, inner conflict, everything that you ever want somebody to be like. Hey, when you tell me a story that's how I want you to convey it for even for being a children's show at no point, like the show, they, they do some childish things. They have some childish humor because you, you need to have that for a kid show, but at no point does the mm-hmm. show pull the punches. Um, Agreed. And, and dumb they talk about it. some very serious stuff. They do. Oh God, they do. Um, but there's still things like, even though they are serious, there's still things that the kids confront in their day to day lives. Um, because not all of us, like, we're not all the same. Mm-hmm. Everybody is going through a different experience, a different life, and they're all living it through the first person. So we all, f- we can only go off our own experiences, but that's, like, that's the beauty of, the, of of Avatar and of shows in general, is that, like, if written the right way, they can affect so many different kinds of people and offer them something, either, like, they can empathize with the, like the the audience can empathize with them things of that nature but that's a that's a topic for another <laughs> we, we might do a spoiler another podcast cast on, on, uh, on avatar because that is you're right that is a lot um but it is we we've done power and uncle iroh do you know like like did you ever wonder how i got the name dragon of the west i love it um yes i don't have time for your silly stories uncle that's more of a demonstration. Like, a... like let, let me tell you that I'm going to show you and not tell you why I'm so <laughs> awesome. Um, yes. But I, I think that one will actually lead us into the next topic. And that is um, one that I think is probably going to be the hardest one. And you and I really had to rack our brains for. And that is that is relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, because a, a lot of times when, when you think about a successful um, relationship, um, whether it be love or a good friendship, uh, working with a boss, working with someone you love, working with someone that you hate. Um, it, it's, it's very hard because it does so much to you and how you express yourself might be different. And I think sometimes sh- shows with visual mediums um, kind of lose that and you, you kind of just get mm-hmm. boiled down to, um, oh, I love you, I would do anything for you or... No, I hate you. I can't stand you, Naruto. Get away from me. Never come near me again. Um, right, right. There's not a lot of gray area when it comes to relationships. It has to be, like, for some reason, writers these days uh, with a lot of, like, say, like, sojo, <coughs> shoujo anime entirely, mm-hmm. uh, that in and of itself, the genre, is full of the cookie-cutter romance where you have uh like girl likes guy but never tells guy um and then you have the show and then they show it by having her blush a lot when he's nearby doing things for him and he's just like he's dead to the world he doesn't understand he's he's an idiot um or maybe he just doesn't want to realize it. maybe he likes her too but in a different way like a sister kind of way uh kind of thing or maybe they've been friends for so long he feels like oh no she's not she, she doesn't love me. Like, that would be weird. Like, kind of thing. And it's just, yeah. We we need more gray area stuff. We need more realistic relationships. Because I would find that just, if not even more entertaining than, uh, than like, shoujo kind of relationships kind of thing. Like, in the in the show don't tell genre. So, and I know you, you brought up the, the card captor Sakura. Um, oh, yes. And... I watched, I remember that being on Toonami, um, 
in like the middle of the afternoon like i I think i was still middle school and you're you're about a year older than i am so you might have been just hitting high school because i think that was like 2012 ish um when i remember the original series coming out Mm, no it was it was on four it was on uh kids wb oh it was before that okay it was okay did, uh that and that was a saturday morning cartoon like it was a uh, for you kids yes like same with one piece except this dub was not messed up actually the original english dub was the best dub out of all of the uh out of all the redubs that they've done i feel like um because that was before yeah. Oh, or it was it was like it was, that was yeah. ending at the tail end of, or the it was at the tail end at the beginning of Yukio. um yes because i yes. really remember like that being when I really jumped onto WB um, here in the in the states, at least uh, when it came to watching shows of that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're more familiar with it. Why don't you tell me about the uh, affections and how they decide to show uh, affection in that show? Right. Okay. So actually, Car Captor Sakura was kind of brown groundbreaking for its time because it had the first like openly gay relationship. So I mean, um, like. It, Clamp does not care whether someone is older, younger, boy, girl, in between, whatever. For them, truly, love is love. Um, so, like, I, I, so it was my first interaction with that as a child. Um, but anyway, sorry, going yeah, off on a fun. tangent. Uh, so the relationship I want to highlight here is the one between the two main characters of Shoran and Sakura. Um or even like oh gosh there are just so many relationships in that show um but i guess i'll just stick with those two uh so at first those two are rivals they each want the cards for themselves and so they kind of fight against each other but they also support each other like they, they're not to the point where like they want to see the other one get hurt mm-hmm. uh i mean like there, there's like one point where like like sakura is kind of out of her league with one of the cards and showan's just like you know showan lets her try he's like go on Let's see what you can do. And like she tries and she fails. And he's just like, see, you're not worthy. Like, it's just a total rivalry thing. But then as he starts to hang out with her more and see her capture more and more cards and how she could be so, uh, what's the word? I'm trying to think of the word. Um, Persistent? Well, there's that. Uh, but also when you think quick on the fly. Oh, quick-witted, like intelligent, uh, well, clever. Yes, okay. yes. And so, like, he starts to admire that about her. He's like, oh, I never would have thought of using that card to capture this card. And and he starts to admire her more, and his feelings start to become more concrete. And so he starts doing more and more things to help her out, and more and more things to help her capture more cards. It, it just, it's very, very beautiful. It's so, it's soft. How do I, that's the only way I could describe it, is that his love towards her is very soft at first. And then he starts to realize, oh my god, I'm in love with her. You know, it just it just really hits him all of a sudden. He doesn't understand why he's doing the things he's doing until he admits it to himself. But, like, we as the audience start picking up on these cues. We're just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know? Like, <laughs> yep, no, so we like, knew that. Why, why it take you so long to get here? Yeah, exactly. And that's the, you know, that was the, that was the beautiful, like, show. But, like, you know, there was no narrator telling you that, like, oh, he started feeling for her. There were no other characters who were starting to say that. Um, at least not until, like, towards the end or towards the uh, middle part of his affection when uh, Sakura's friends, uh, Tomoyo, picks it up. And she's just like, oh, I get it. Because she, she recognizes his feelings for her because she also has feelings for Sakura. But, like, she... She knows that Sakura would never feel the same way towards her back. So she accepts her place in the relationship as just someone who can continue to support her and continue to make Sakura happy. And that makes her happy. Um, But like, again, she just, she never really tells that, you know, she never tells Sakura how she feels. She doesn't really tell the audience how she feels. She just continues to do what she does. And I think I know this because it came up in a movie where she did tell someone that, but it wasn't in the series. So I guess it doesn't really count. Anyway, uh, so that there's that relationship, but also too we, you know, we want to focus not just on romantic relationships, but also like mentoring relationships, teacher to student relationships, because those are also very important in our day to day lives. Oh, they're they're incredibly important. Um, do you, do you want to get do you want to get Avatar off the bat first? Sure. Yeah. All right. Um, 
we're we're gonna do it, guys. We're we're gonna reference Avatar a lot, probably because we've all watched it. <laughs> um, but Iroh and Zuko. I mean, really, Iroh and any other character that he runs into. Um, but Iroh and Zuko are is probably the best example of like a paternal, like not just teacher to teacher to student because that is there but if you were like hey what's what's the definition of a good father please go watch avatar the last airbender and watch any episode with iroh in it please um (laughs) because that show to me in in encapsulates when everyone's almost like i you know as a parent you have to walk this fine line you have to let your kids fail support them you know discipline them you're gonna get disappointed in them and it you get that full range of human emotions between these two characters. And it, it's probably what I would say the most fulfilling resolved relationship mm-hmm. um, in there. Uh, and just j- any, any relationship that they have uh, just to go on with that, um, to go on with that. And I don't know if that's what, when we say like mentor, um, like in the very beginning when he's like, nope, he goes, we're going to, he's like, we're gonna, um, run the basic set, do the, do the first set, do the first set, do the first set. And you, you kind of get to see why Iroh is so good because he's like, nope, until you can do this perfectly, you can do it. But he's also very nurturing towards his nephew and wants his nephew to be successful and just to be happy. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's where you were going to go with it, um, but that's... No, I I agree. Like, even... He even let Zuko go, like, off on his own. Like, no matter... Even though it was super hard for him. Twice. Like, you can just... Yeah, twice. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Um, I think... God, yeah, the second time was even harder than the first because he just watched him just be so... He... Zuko had everything that he said he wanted, but then, like, it just made him so miserable. And Uncle Iroh was just like, I'm not telling you why you're miserable, because you need to figure it out for yourself. You do. And it just that... Yeah, and it just... Oh, it must have been so hard to watch. And, you know, you see him cry and break down in the prison at one point after he visits him. So and honestly, I, the the reason that's so good is because you get to see Iroh like treat him that way. Where you see Iroh's like, no, this is like this is the Avatar's bison. Um, this is uh, this is this is uh, you you need you're coming to this crossroads. Like, who is the person that you are you are meant to be? Um, and I think that the resolution to this that entire storyline is when they they find him again at at the capital of Bossing Say where. Iroh loses his son and Mm. then Zuko comes there with the avatar he's now trained the avatar the avatar can do firebending can do everything else and they're like Mm -hmm. your uncle's at the the end of that tent and he goes in there and he's sleeping and Zuko goes in his like uncle and he sees his uncle is sleeping and he sits down in a very like submissive like on his knees and just sits there and waits like mm-hmm. like one of those things where i don't know how else to say how sorry i am for this but you deserve your sleep and i do not deserve to be the one to like wake you up and it, it was this it was like when you watch that like i felt like that was just as gun wrenching as the leaving where it's like he's still so conflicted inside of like if this man doesn't forgive me i cannot be angry with him I cannot be upset with him. Nobody could be upset with him after what I've done to him. And we kind of get to see that in the in the Avatar play as well, when they're all watching the plays on themselves. Um, mm. And he's like, it's like, did you say that to him? And he goes, I might as well have. And I, I think those oh. points where, there, where, where he has to watch himself and this depiction of him, <laughs> it, it shows yeah. this, it is, this is this familial relationship that is so so damn important and like a lot of people i feel relate to that where they either one their father is the fire lord and just kind of like an absent asshole who doesn't think you're good enough and then you've Mm -hmm. spurned the only person who says you are good enough you're so worthy you are such a great person and they just want you to realize that as well Mm -hmm. i agree 100 percent. so good such a good show uh 
what was the other relationship we were talking about? Like the other ment- mentor relationship you, we were talking about. You brought up um, Eraserhead. Oh, that's right. Yes. Um, I think I, I love I love his personally because especially towards the end of season uh, four. Oh, it's uh, it's so good. So like the, that's one of the things that we were talking about um, before we started recording was we started we I mentioned how Eraserhead is just like one of the best teachers. And here's why. And I gave several examples. And like, that's the thing that was that like. Like, while Izuku um, mentions All Might being the best hero and, ever, and, like, you're surrounded by everyone going, number one hero, number one hero, and then they show you. Whereas in with Eraserhead, he, they don't proclaim him to be the best teacher. He never says he's the best teacher. He, knows, he doesn't even say that he likes teaching. He doesn't say that he hates it either. But, um, but he does what he does, and he just does it so well. He's able to take this group of vastly different characters uh, who are all pretty much main characters in and of themselves, uh, takes them, puts them in a class of like, what is it, like 30 of them or something? Mm-hmm. And he's able to help one group like get better with studying. He's able to help another group uh, work with, like understand the philosophy behind why you need a hero's license and... Uh, and like he mentor, he like it's just like usually in anime or in video games, since you are playing only one character or you only see it from one point of view. Uh, typically, like the any kind of relationship the teacher would have would be like very one to one. They would take you aside several times, but like Eraserhead is able to be like a really good example of a really good teacher, someone who's able to reach out and talk with a vast group of of students, and he's just. He's one of those. He's one of those teachers that's just like, like, hey, you can like mess with me all you want, but you can't mess with my students. <laughs> and th- that's a that's a really good one as well. With when it comes to, um, when it when it comes to teachers, um, and uh, just just the mentor relationship. And honestly, um, as as odd as this is gonna say, um, and I, I brought it up previously when we were trying to think of examples, um, Kakashi, uh. K- yeah, it's Kakashi. Kakashi does it in a in a few a few different ways. Um, he does the the power dynamic definitely in Boruto, um, but when it comes to mm-hmm. to Naruto and the 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 first season, um, when it's like okay, we're gonna do the bell test, and we're going to 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 really see what you guys are capable of, and he's he's probing them and feeling them out. Um, he's like, if you guys can get these bells from me, you guys will eat. The final one won't be able to. <laughs> yeah. And of course, Naruto runs right in there. He's like, ah, I'm just going to be ah, Naruto. Um, big numbers. <laughs> I'm strong. I'm Hokage. And he's just like, no, I'm you're be not. Strong. I practice so hard. Yeah. And whereas Sakura and Sasuke both actually follow the test. And right. he, he sees that it's like, okay, the issue here is not necessarily that that you know one of these people is like so much better than the other it's okay naruto needs to learn to not be hot-headed sasuke needs to learn to trust other people and sakura please stop being so- boy crazy about sasuke um because <laughs> her character's so relegated to like that's it oh it's so sad too like the author even mentioned how he's just like he's like i didn't really know how to draw girl characters or like even how to make them He's like, I just did the best I could at the time. Yeah, <laughs> um, and I I think when you see that, and probably the the best example of that is um, one of the the later episodes, like just after the bell episode, uh, they go and they see a, a a memorial or a shrine, and he goes, mm. the greatest ninja of our village are on this sign. And of course, Naruto was like, being. I'm gonna get my he's name. Like, on I want to be on that sign. He's like, well, they're all dead. <laughs> and he's like, they all died in the line of duty and, and in battle. Um, yeah. They, they all paid the ultimate sacrifice. And I thought it was one of those like. It, it it was it was like don't don't be meaningless in what you do. And to me, it was at that point that you really got to see, you know, Kakashi show that like no, he's he's cut out to be a teacher. Like he's reading a pervy book. We're getting some of those shonen tropes. He's he's bitch slapped Naruto 
from one side <laughs> of the village to the other side in this training mountain like this training segment <laughs> <laughs> but y- you get to see like okay he's he's a good teacher he was sussing them out he's going like what do i need to do for each of them and as as it goes on he gives them all different tasks especially like the tree climbing one um and sakura nails it and she's like hey guys i'm up here yeah and eventually naruto goes over and is like hey how are you doing that and he goes good he's realizing that he can't do this alone that even though yes. he's an outside and you're like, oh, wow, you had this strategy in mind the entire time to get you there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, again, like an example of like a telling, not showing Kakashi could have approached them and just told Naruto, hey, you know what? You can't really do this on your own. He's like, why don't you ask for help? But he didn't. He just kind of let them be. He just kind of watched and let them figure things out on their L on their own. And that's one of the things that teachers, you know, like really need to do in order to. Uh, to, to teach is not just tell people but let them figure it out on themselves because that's when you those are like the lessons you learn the most mm-hmm. or at least are the most ingrained i guess i should say yeah you're right so. those, those are the ones that stick with you the ones that you failed the ones that you didn't understand yes. you didn't get and then one day it came together and yep i think the, the important part here is with those episodes kakashi one never he never like was like we're gonna do this thing he was always like hey, we've been practicing this. You know how you can do this now? Well, what if you tried applying it like this? And mm-hmm. and it, it was like, okay, you're right. They, they have been training to practice and use and control it like this. And all you're saying now is, okay, you can, you can do this. Well, why can't you do this if you can do that? Like, if you can stand on water, why can't you walk up a tree? Uh-huh. And it's like, I, 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 don't, I don't know. And it always felt like it, it was very good and they did a good job of uh, showing you like, hey, each one of my lessons is going to build off on the previous one and we're not going to go to the next lesson until I feel, oh, you understand that part of it and you, you know what we're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I guess now that we've talked about Naruto, um, probably longer than I ever thought we would have. Because uh, <laughs> who would have thought that had been really good? Right? Um, <laughs> Who thought Naruto would be a really good example of Show Don't Tell? Yeah, really. Ah, <laughs> oh, God. Like, we're we're going to skip the later points, but the points where they do it, they do it very well. Um, yes. Let's let's go into the final one then. Um, and the reason I think Naruto does this, or is an example for this, um, is character growth. Um, mm, yes. Show Don't Tell in a character growth, and I don't mean just like, hey, three years has gone by, my short spiky hair is now longer hair, um, my whiskers are longer, and my outfit's changed. Um, <laughs> whiskers. <laughs> you know, cats get bigger, they get whiskers get longer. Naruto, his, his whiskers got longer. Um, I know, like, I'm not even quite sure what those lines are anyway. Like, they do look like whiskers, but I think they're, like, actually on his face or something like that. Like, they're, like, uh, some kind of, like, birthmark or something. I don't know. Anyway, I, I always found those weird. I thought they were whiskers because it was supposed to be the fox inside of him, but I could be completely but wrong. I know, I know! But they don't poke out of it. They don't come like out of his skin. Like they are on his. They're like etched on his face. Huh. Huh. I guess I always. I didn't think they were ever etched on his face. So I always thought they were whiskers that like no one just really acknowledged. But you never see anyone <laughs> no really one touch just his really face. Said anything. Um. <laughs> no. It, it's it, it's not the scarlet letter, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> No, like even if if you if you do the behind if, if you look at Naruto from like behind his head and he and he's like he's like maybe he might do a glance over his shoulder. Mm-hmm. If they were whiskers, they would show up as lines that would be like coming out like in the, like the sky would be the background of them, but they're not. They're like right up against his face, so that made me believe that they were some kind of like <laughs> like birthmark or something. Whisker birthmarks, got it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But let's. Whiskers got longer. <laughs> Whiskers got longer. That's all I know. I'm never gonna forget That's that. That's fine. <laughs> oh my god. So we're gonna do. What we'll do. We're gonna go into growth of a character. And yes. I'm, yes. Because I'm drawing a break. Because now I'm just trying to picture Naruto with like super long whiskers. If he got a little, a little like trying to go into a place and it's like they just bend against the wall. Um, it's like oh, I can't fit there. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my whisker senses are tingling. <laughs> um, but uh, one of my favorites is is a really good uh, metaphor and homage uh, that was done for just showing character growth in um, 
in Avatar, once again, we're going to go back to Zuko. Mm-hmm. Uh, after Zuko frees Appa from Ba Sing Se and the Dai Li agents, mm. uh, he, he, he gets sick. And uh, yes. he has this fever dream of two dragons that are at polar opposites. And the second I saw it, I was like, oh, it's the, the Native American story of every man or every person has two wolves inside of them. One of, like, happiness, love, and compassion, and one of hate and anger. And it's like, well, how do I know which one's stronger? And it's like, it's the one you feed. And we see these Ooh. two dragons. One is blue, one is red. One sounds like Azula. And occasionally we see Zuko do things like Azula. Um, mm-hmm. Because, it, uh, sorry, I don't no, mean you're to, good. Go, but go that, that reminds me. So he... But he only does that because she's been praised as the prodigy, as the person who's lucky, as the person. So, of course, he wants to emulate that because that's what he wants, too. Yeah. He wants that recognition. He wants that respect. He, he wants to so, be like her and or, or he wants mm-hmm. he wants what she has. He, he wants yes. his rightful spot. But I saw that and I was like, oh, my God, they just and it makes sense. Like we're, we're doing Chinese based martial arts. It's, it's more Chinese mythology here than it is um western and i was like oh wow that is their take on it and it was it, it was so simple because it's like one's like do it one's like don't do it like it's it's the angel devil thing of like that confliction but i was like but the fact that you said okay he's a firebender and later we learn the dragons are the are the the, the progenitors and the of the of firebending and they're the original creators of that um and here we have them inside of him struggling to to point to, to 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 come out and to see who is the person he's going to be is he going to fall in line with the one that's more like azula that's the one that's praised or is he going to follow mm-hmm. the teaching of his uncle and i was like oh my god this is th- this is such a great story and it's so simple and we've seen it done a million times um but i thought it was i thought it was gorgeous and i thought it was a great emulation of that um that had never even actually occurred to me. I just saw I saw it as like the angel devil thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I mean, if you think about the angel devil thing, like that's st- even that still is like, well, which, which which one of those is stronger? Well, which one do you give in to more? If, if you're doing the right thing more, you'd think that doing mm-hmm. the right thing would be easier because that would be the stronger one. That's the one that's like, oh, yeah, I, I know this is who I'm supposed to be or what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, right. Whereas when we see it here with uh with this is it's like Zuko's really walking that fine line of he he's always trying to do the good thing and he's honorable like that that's never something that's in question is never his honor it's it's his pride it's it's is he is he what the Fire Lord believes a Firebender should be and what he's supposed to be perceived as so I I really enjoyed that as a as a fantastic um show don't don't tell moment mm-hmm. um and then honestly uh do you, i'm sorry did you have another one no no that was great um, i had one more that i thought of because we we originally brought up um we we brought up for for character growth uh or we brought up actually for this for power was full metal alchemist um to show a power difference when ed is first learning how to do alchemy and he attacks the fear to be like, I created this, I got in here, I don't need any of this, and the fear, like, is, is, is like, yeah, maybe I need to get better guards, but you're not good enough to be a threat, and cuts his, his spear in half. Um, <laughs> okay, alright, so you're, you're gonna need to go into more detail for that, um, cause, like, there are still some people who have not watched Full Metal Alchemist, like, either Brotherhood or the other one. People who and... have not watched it, go watch it, it's a great show. <laughs> Seriously, uh, well, you need to watch Brotherhood. Yeah, watch I mean, the other one is, it's okay, but... Watch Full Metal hey, versus Brotherhood Full is the way to go. Full Metal Alchemist, and then just watch Brotherhood. Yes. Um, but <laughs> you're, you're right. Um, you're right. So... So what happens is, is that Alchemist, ha- it's a hard magic system where it's equal, you know, you have to give up something in order to get something in return. Same thing goes with materials. If you want to make something new, it has to be made with the right proportion of the element so in um for edward's example when he's taking a alchemy test in order to prove that he can become an alchemist 
he has to like most people have to draw a circle in order to tell the material like it kind of gives like a road map to the material be like okay you're going to become this now but he doesn't even need that because he's so because he's special he's the main he's the protagonist um because he's made certain choices in his life so anyway so when people are just like why aren't you going to make a circle or why aren't you going to write a spell or whatever and he's just like he's like nope don't need it i'm amazing and they're just like okay so then he makes a spear from the material in the ground uh by just by like clapping his hands and he's like he's like so then he confronts the the fearer the person who's in charge of the uh, of the kingdom that he's in who's watching him take this test and he's just like He's like, you know what? He's like, I could do away with you like right now. He's like, I don't even need circles to do whatever I need to do. He's like, so you should be more careful in these kind of situations. And then the fear kind of just chuckles. And it's just like, you know what? You've got a lot of gumption. I like, like you. Like the cut of your jib. And then, <laughs> yeah, he's like, I like you. He's like, but... and then he's just like, but you are still so, so young. You still do not understand where you stand in the world. And then, like, at this point, Edward is pointing a spear at his face. And Edward just can't even comprehend. He's just like, what are you talking about? He's like, you are at my mercy right now. But the then. The fear starts walking spear, away. <laughs> he starts walking away. Like, just. And then, like, Edward's like, what? And then the spear is literally cut in half and he didn't even know it. He didn't even see the fear of draw his sword or anything. He was that fast and that powerful. And it's so like that, yes. The power scales like that was beautiful because it shows where like you've got the ruler of the nation versus some punk kid who walks in who thinks he's so special. Um <laughs> and I'm going to leave like the last 10 minutes to to gush about a couple power moments because there are a few that you and I've brought up that we didn't do. Um, oh, but what yes. I actually wanted to talk about there was growth. And I thought about it towards, uh, as we got to the end of this, when we started talking about characters growing, um, the entire point mm-hmm. of the show is Ed- Edward, um, and his brother Alric, uh, lose, lose like themselves. Uh, you mean, you mean Alphonse? Alphonse. I don't know why. Ed- Ed- Elric's the last name. Uh, so, uh, Elric's the last um, name. But they, they lose themselves. They make choices to practice this magic and it costs one, mm-hmm. his entire body and it costs the other mm-hmm. one, his arm and his leg. Um, no, it cost him his arm, and then, like, in order to save his brother, it cost him a leg. <laughs> I mean, I was, yes, um, but, I, no, you're <laughs> fine, I was, I was trying to leave it up there and be like, like, go watch it, like, one loses a body, one loses half a body. And right. the entire show, they're, they're chasing after, alchemy is all about the Philosopher's Stone, um, and they're, they're chasing after it, and he's always, they're trying to find this, this key, this fix-all key that's gonna be like, any mistake we've made is now gone, don't worry about it, it's fine. Um, yes. And the very last episode. They find out what that kind of element costs. Well, no, not even like what it and... costs, but th- he learns. He's like, he's like, wait a minute. I Because he, he, he's gone back to this place to make that same choice. And he's done it, what, three times by this point? Three or four times? Um, He's right. been to that area where the choice is made. And he keeps making the same choice of like, Nope, I'm smart. I can do this. Nope, I'm smart. I can do this. Nope, I'm better than you. I'm I'm gifted. I'm more intelligent. I understand. I'm learning. And in the very last episode, he becomes so humbled and he's like, "I can't believe it wasn't I didn't see it before." And he goes back and you and you watch what he sacrifices to set things right. Yes. And it, it's one of those where I'm like, "Oh, there, there's there's real growth in here to say at, at my smartest, I was never actually that smart. I was so blinded and and just like cowardice towards anything, and I, I couldn't admit that I was in out of my depth. I couldn't ask for help, and it towards the end, I, I felt like his character had so much growth when they got there, and it made that final mm-hmm. payoff so worth it, so so worth it. Right. Um. And that's that's why I was trying to keep it a little bit vaguer. Um. But we're at that <laughs> we're, we're at that like ten minute mark. Do you have any like favorite like show don't tell moment like do you have one? Oh goodness a favorite um hmm i really liked um like i know i know you're a big fan also of of black clover yes. and 
Once you get over Asta screaming, it is such a great show, and it is full of so many beautiful, gorgeous fights that are just, mm, they're phenomenal. Anyway, one of my favorite, and I didn't even expect it to be my favorite, was uh, a character called Luck, who when you conf- when you meet him, he's his character is so one-dimensional. He just loves fighting. He just wants to fight. But then you find out his background story is that he's from a very low-class family. And the only way to get up in the world and to be considered a noble or whatever is to have very powerful magic and to be able to beat the people who have powerful magic. So that's why he wants to fight. He has to fight all the time in order to be successful, to be happy, to make his mom happy. Yes. Because uh, his mom, yeah, because his mom like was very poor and people made fun of her and they looked down on her and looks just like, don't you dare look down on my mom. He's just like, I will beat you all and prove that she was worthy or whatever. Um, but then he comes at one point. Where he realizes that he can't win every fight. And it just... It, it humbles him. And it may, and then he... It's like he snaps out of it. He snaps out of this craze. Are you talking about the one um, where he talks about the, the guy from the Spade Kingdom? Yes. Oh, yeah. He's... And he's just... He's like... I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. Yeah, I don't want to fight him. And so for a character... <laughs> yeah. For a character who's been talking about nothing but fighting people for like 100 plus episodes now, for him all of a sudden to not want to fight someone shows the power difference in such a way. And it's just, oh, it was it was beautiful. It was a beautiful moment. It was really well done. I, I and it just made, loved that moment. Yeah. That was so good. Oh, you're so right. That's such a good moment. Um, <laughs> I... Okay, so now it's your turn. What is, what's your favorite? So I'm going to go old school for you and I. I'm going to go uh, Seven Deadly Sins, which I need to read the manga because Netflix oh. has taken a sweet-ass time. And I've heard the manga is very good. <laughs> sure are. Um, first season. Um, we know who okay. Meliodas is, and we're going out. Yes. And we're, we're, there, there are two in the first season that really do it for me, and I'm going to do them in a quick order. Um, the first one is... Uh, we go to the town where they make the really good ale, but a holy knight came in and seals the well with his with with a sword. Right. And they're yes. all upset at this kid because the kid said the holy knight was a piece of shit or whatever, and they're all like, "This kid doesn't know any better. Like he's he's he, he's Naruto. Please forgive us for Naruto and the guys like that." And Meli, uh, Melios comes in there, he pulls out the sword and is like, throws it away, and we get to the end of the episode. And you 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 go to a tower with a holy knight, and a holy knight like charges up, and he like thors a, a spear and hurls it, hurls <laughs> it, and you're like, what is he doing? And then it goes to like Meliodas, and he's talking with um oh god, what's her name? What's the girl's name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Oh, oh my god, I'm a horrible person. <laughs> How could you not? For, how could you forget like a character that has I my know, name? I know because I because I was I was so stuck on that. But he's talking to Elizabeth, and he goes, "Uh huh, yeah." And she's talking, and he goes, "No, I, I completely." And they're having this conversation, and he's like distracted, and he's like watching the sky, and he's like, "Can you just stand over here?" All right, that's good. And she goes, <laughs> "Are you even listening to me?" And he reaches. Yeah, she gets all upset. He reaches his hand up, grabs this spear, and then turns around and hurls it back. And that's like a three minute sequence. Maybe maybe it's a minute. Maybe a minute mm-hmm. and a half. And he hurls it back. And it goes back. She's like, what happened? And he goes, someone was just trying to send me a message. That dialogue ends. And you watch the spear go past the guy's face, cut his cheek, <laughs> and then like impale on the wall and blow out the backside of his castle. And you're like... Of his, of his, of his cow. Yeah, castle. you're like, holy shit. Um, and then my favorite one probably... Of all time, is when we're introduced to Bandit Vaughn. He's yes. in jail, and mm-hmm. he is he is like crucified to the max to a wall. Like we're talking industrial railroad spikes in his feet, in his shoulders, his forearms, Ugh. and his calves. And he's just laying there, and he's got this long beard. And then you see the the Seven Deadly Sins come in there to rescue him, and he goes. Oh, the captain's here. I guess it's time that he needs me. And the next sequence, we just see him walking out the door and he's looking at one of the people and she's like, how did you get out? You were near dead and starts swinging the sword and he uses it to shave his face. And I'm like, (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm like, we just saw a guy throw a thunder stick back at somebody, and you you, you were you were impaled to a goddamn wall, and you yeah. use a sword fight to shave your face. And I like for power scaling those two moments. I'm just like, mm-hmm. okay. When I want to show how strong somebody is, I want it to be like that. Uh huh. Oh. <sighs> yeah. So, I mean, there's so many good moments. So I think what would be great is if you know we kind of turn it to the audience now. It'd be like, you know, you guys kind of have to look at your favorite shows and one, you know, kind of question like why they're your favorite. Like, do they have a lot of show don't tell moments, and how do they incorporate, you know, certain like growth and relationship and powers and in a way that you don't you don't need the show to tell you about it you could just you watch it and you learn it for yourself and you you see what's going on it's it doesn't have to be spoon fed it's not shoved down your throat it's yeah oh, i picked up on that it it what it didn't feel spoon fed it felt very intentional and it it makes the show more worthwhile in the end oh my goodness and that just actually reminded me of something okay. That reminded me of like, oh goodness, this will have to be for another topic. But like the the LGBTQ, uh, recently I'm not sure if you saw on the news, but Marvel just got like shit faced from the fans because they introduced four different characters and they were on different like spectrums, I guess you could call it categories of the LGBTQ community. But instead of just like introducing these characters as badass characters in their own right, they introduced them to say, this is the gay one. This is the pansexual one. This is the Islamic one. Like they didn't even allow these people to know these characters for who they were as people before they introduced them as LGBTQ people. And, like, that is one of the things you need to learn, especially when it comes to sensitive reader, like, to the, um, to, uh, various, various types of people is that, like, we don't, we as an audience want the representation, but we don't care for it. It, We don't want it to be a category for you to check off of your list. It can be part of who they are, but it's not who, I want to know who they are, not, not just be like, this is what they are. It's like, that's, that is why show don't tell is so important and like that's why like w- as far as characters goes um like you want to you want to introduce them as a as a person first versus like versus what they could be categorically like group they could be put into no i i completely agree and you're right uh there will be coming up here on wrong button we're gonna have a few stronger episodes i've got things in in mind coming down the pipe for that so that can definitely be one that we will probably delve into um a little bit later because uh someone pointed out to me what the what the term actually is um and we right now we just don't have the time for that because that will be an episode of itself um but thank you so much for joining me again liz uh we do greatly i greatly appreciate you being on here and i know you'll be a recurring Aww. character and it's gonna be fantastic um yeah where can we find you and what are you doing Okay, so still working on the uh, the Magical Girl comic at, at this point right now, but I am updating screenshots of panels that have been updated on my Instagram, which is Queen E un, uh, under what it was it underscore yes underscore digital is my Instagram page, um, and that is where I update my comic. Uh, I also have a Twitter at uh, RoarLion22, uh, and then like soon. Uh, December is the launch date I'm looking at for Kia, uh, December 2020. If not, it will be January 2021. Uh, but I kind of want to... Uh, so anyway, so that's where I will be working on stuff for, for my comic. Um, and that's where I'm hoping to include a lot of show, don't tell stuff into the comic. <laughs> and I've I've watched the screenshots and I've already picked up on that. So I'm I'm very excited and I appreciate you for, for being where you are in your creative stance and going through the artistic process coming in here and showing that um, and how important Show Don't Tell is. As for us here at Built to Fail, Mondays and Wednesdays, you can still find Mr. and Mrs. Play. Uh, we will be wrapping up Okami, or we will have just wrapped up um, Jedi Fallen Order, and we'll be right back in Okami. We've already finished the recording on that, as well as Mr. Play is currently going through Bloodborne. And stay tuned, I believe Nick is coming back, and we'll be on a future podcast as well, uh, so we can go into that. Remember, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also subscribe to this on Podbean as well as Spotify. We're still working on iTunes. And thank you again for being here, Liz, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.